Coming to you from UC Davis and UC Davis Health, this is Unfold, a podcast that breaks down complicated problems and unfolds curiosity-driven research. I'm Amy Quinton. And I'm Marianne Ross Sharp. You've heard of the concept of One Health, Marianne, yeah? Yeah, the approach to healthcare that recognizes we're all connected, right? People, animals, and our environment. We're going to look at how that unfolds on the ground. I think its importance has been made very clear during the COVID pandemic. You want to explain that a little more? Yeah. So the virus that causes COVID is zoonotic, which means it can spread between people and animals. So in addition to infecting people, the virus has infected hundreds of animals, from dogs and cats to lions and gorillas. You've probably seen the stories about animals in zoos. Right. And there's evidence to suggest that COVID-19 began at a wet market, where wild animals and people come into contact with one one another. And potentially the virus may have jumped from an animal to a person. So we need a collaborative approach to health, looking at animals, people, and the environment together, a more holistic approach. And One Health is not just a way to improve health globally, but locally as well. In fact, this is put into practice in a small community in Yolo County, California, a place called Knight's Landing. Right, the Knight's Landing One Health Center. It provides medical care to people and veterinary care for animals. UC Davis and UC Davis Health faculty and students volunteer their time to provide care for this underserved community. And I got to tag along earlier this year when vet students and nursing students were helping out. And now we're going to hear what a typical clinic Sunday is like. Every third Sunday of the month, dozens of students transform what's normally a hunting club into a makeshift veterinary clinic in Knight's Landing. They're from the School of Veterinary Medicine and the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing. We have it on Sundays specifically because we're serving a community of mostly um, agricultural workers who that's their only day off of the week is Sundays. Veterinarian Kristen Jankowski is faculty director for the Knight's Landing One Health Clinic. So the students are great enough to not mind getting up very early, unloading a large volume of supplies from a shed. It's organized chaos and highly efficient. Students from the School of Veterinary Medicine, dressed in blue scrubs, set up a pharmacy, exam tables, scales, computers, even large camping tents so vets can care for skittish cats without too many distractions. The whole thing takes 45 minutes. Outside, Jankowski greets one of the first clients of the day. Hi, darling. Who is this? My name's Chica. Oh, hello, Chica. You are so sweet. Carlos Ayala and his young daughters brought Chica, their little five-pound puppy, who is shivering in the wind. She is a chug. She's a chug, chihuahua and a pug. Um, do you guys have an appointment? Or at nine? Are you at nine? Yeah. Awesome. She's, I guess, she's going to get her first vaccines. Oh, how exciting. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So then I'm guessing they're writing up. Carlos says he's never been to the clinic before, but is glad it's here. Well, this is our first dog, or my first dog. So I'm just getting, you know, introduced to all of this, making sure she's fine and doing well. So this is my first time. I heard it around the community that they're going to be here and it's home, so we don't have to travel that far. Fewer than 1,000 people live in this tiny agricultural community nestled in the Sacramento Valley. There aren't a lot of businesses, and many have left, including health care providers. Knight's Landing used to have a human medical facility that then left the area. The med school was asked to come in and bring a student group to run a student-run clinic on the human med side. Jankowski is talking about the free community health clinic run by School of Medicine students, also in Knight's Landing. That was established in 2011. Then in 2013, the, the folks attending that human medical care clinic started to express that, hey, we have pets and we don't have care options for them either. Would there be any way you could help? The help they provide to this underserved community is free. About a quarter of Knight's Landing residents live in poverty. The median household income is around $37,000. <laughs> At an exam table, Carlos Ayala meets with second-year vet student Izzy Hack and veterinarian Eric Olstad. Any concerns for her at all? None at all. Health? No, awesome. none at all. Yeah. That's what we like to hear. Yeah, no, she seems very happy. Yeah, she looks great. Um, I would absolutely advocate getting her spayed at some point, though, unless you are planning on breeding her. Um, In addition to clients I'm learning really how to care for their animals, vet students are also learning how to interact with clients and ask the right questions. What vaccines do you want to give today? Rabies, December, parvus. Yep. How is this going to go? So we give the rabies. When do I need to give that again? One year. 
a lot of the clinic's attention is focused on preventative medicine, such as vaccines, says Jankowski. We see a lot of skin disease. We see a lot of ear and eye disease because those things are common as well. And we do see some infectious disease. We work hard to prevent um, transmissible infectious disease to people that's termed zoonotic disease. That can be anything from uh, diseases that we normally are vaccinating for to parasites that we're trying to help the families prevent in their pets so it doesn't transfer to people. Outside, Stephanie Hernandez also came to get vaccines for her two large huskies. One husky is the mother, and the other is her 11-month-old pup, Oso, who is making it known that he doesn't like being separated from mom. So this is his rabies tag. Okay. I'll put it in a bag so you don't lose it. And then this first, I know, hey, hey. This first one is um, heart guard. So that it's just an oral It's not Stephanie's first time at the clinic. She says she wouldn't have many options for veterinary care if the clinic weren't here. I come here because it's really close and my mom doesn't know how to drive. So it like it helps us a lot with them coming out here and providing these vaccines for the dogs. While vet students care for the animals, nursing students care for the people. The students play an important role here, says Associate Professor Susan Adams with the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing, who advises them. What we've been finding is that there are a lot of people, especially in underserved areas, um, especially with people who may be lower income, that sometimes they'll get the care for their animals before they get the care for themselves. And it's an opportunity for us to connect with the community and through their animal, talk to them about their own health practices. That's exactly what nursing student Tiara Washington did. This was her first time volunteering at the One Health Clinic. So I followed um, one patient who brought her cat in because the cat hurt its leg. So I got to like take her outside and bring her to the table and talk to her about her COVID status and like get her blood sugar checked and her um, blood pressure checked and those kind of things are like you don't really get them done unless you go to a doctor's appointment and not everyone has the opportunity. A lot of people that show up may not realize they need care, says Susan Adams. In the past, we've picked up people with diabetes, hypertension, pretty serious postpartum depression, and people that have a lot of misinformation about COVID and about vaccination. So it gives us an opportunity to perhaps engage more of the community um, in the importance of being vaccinated. Getting people the care they need isn't always easy. There are cultural and language barriers. Many people who come to the clinic only speak Spanish. But UC Davis Chicano Studies students also volunteer their time to help translate. Santos Lopez and his son Jonathan brought their little white poodle mixes Popeye and Olivia for checkups. Santo says they visited this clinic more than once with their dogs. He says if the clinic didn't exist, it wouldn't be good because animals need vaccines and a lot of people don't have a way to pay for them. But we can bring them here and that way our animals are healthier. That includes Popeye and Olivia, who are being examined by first-year vet student Taylor Traxler. And then how are they doing overall health-wise? Any problems at home? Any coughing, sneezing, vomiting, diarrhea, things like that? In casa, um, su salud me dijo que de él está bien, pero ya While vet students no examine the dogs, no nursing no student no. Sidney Radmussen talks to Santos's son, Jonathan Lopez. What's your favorite fruit? My favorite fruit is in, uh, an orange. An orange? What's your favorite sports? Um, basketball, football. Football's fun, you wear your helmet, right? It sounds like a casual conversation, yeah. but Rasmussen says she's really trying to assess his health habits. It kind of gives you a little bit of insight into what the, a day in their life looks like. So sports, you know, do you wear a helmet? Is that something, a mouth guard, things that maybe they don't always think about, but or the importance of it, and if they do wear it, and, and the benefits of that, or boxing, you know? Have you ever lost consciousness with that? Sometimes they think kids um, have a lot of fun, and they don't. They don't always know. Sometimes parents don't always know what's going on. So um, I'm just here to just talk and get to know 
get to know people. Veterinarian Eric Olstad says this holistic approach is important because it gives more people access to care. Just because I'm a vet doesn't mean I don't care about the human attached to that pet. I think this is a really cool model um, to look at for these types of clinics um, and even for clinics in general um, to tie these health subjects together. You know, cats get diabetes and so do people. Dogs get arthritis, but so do people. So it's kind of neat that we can have the same conversation um, for two different species in the same room. By noon, when the clinic begins to wind down, veterinarians, nurses, and students have provided care for more than 30 animals and people. Jankowski, who pours her heart and soul into this work, is exhausted, but elated. Uh, I just love it, and I, I just love coming here. It is, it's very refreshing to be able to make a direct impact um, and be able to, to help a community that really appreciates and deserves such fantastic care. They, they have these pets that are a part of their lives, and it's, I feel it's just a wonderful gift that we can give to listen to what they need and respond. Amy, this clinic sounds pretty unique, especially given that it's run by veterinary and nursing students. I think you mentioned that veterinary care for the clinic began back in 2013. Was this the first UC Davis student-run vet clinic in an underserved community? It wasn't the first one. Way back in 1992, students and community members in Sacramento opened a clinic for pets of people experiencing homelessness. And that expanded into another clinic in Davis and then into Knight's Landing. And two to three times a year, vet students also travel to a community called Covella up in northern Mendocino County. Each weekend, they provide about 100 spay-neuter surgeries for animals in addition to health checkups. Wow, that's a lot of surgeries in one weekend. It is. Wow, and you know UC Davis Health also offers a number of student-run medical clinics in underserved communities in the Sacramento area. Under physician supervision, School of Medicine students offer care to the Asian, South Asian, Latino, African American, Muslim, Filipino communities, and more, as well as those experiencing homelessness. It's all part of a very important holistic One Health approach to caring for the community, I think. I agree. You can find a lot more information and links to all of these clinics on our Unfold website. That's ucdavis.edu slash unfold. And there you'll also find photos from my visit to the Knights Landing Clinic and listen to more episodes of Unfold as well. I'm Amy Quinton. And I'm Marianne Rush-Sharp. Thanks for listening. Unfold is a production of UC Davis. Original music for Unfold comes from Damian Barrett and Curtis Jerome Haynes. Additional music comes from Blue Dot Sessions. If you like Unfold, leave us a review because reviews can help more people like you find our show and enjoy it. So write your review on Apple Podcasts or leave a rating for us on Spotify or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thanks for helping this show grow. If you like this podcast, check out UC Davis's other podcast, The Backdrop. It's a monthly interview program featuring conversations with UC Davis scholars and researchers working in the social sciences, humanities, arts, and culture. Hosted by public radio veteran Soterius Johnson, the conversations feature new work and expertise on a trending topic in the news. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.